taking part in a spin along or a challenge is a fantastic way to build community and to improve your spinning skills. And in that vein, this week we are talking about the sock spin along that's been hosted by My Woolen Mitten and she is on YouTube and My Woolen Mitten Farm on Instagram. And in a moment, I'm going to go back to the house and I'm going to talk about the fibres. But first of all, I just thought I'd show you where we are. If you are new here, my name is Becca and I'm a hand spinner, knitter and newbie weaver and you're very welcome to West Wales. If you're an old friend, welcome back. So if you are very observant, you'll notice I'm wearing the hat that I spun for, gosh, quite near the beginning of the channel actually and it's been sat finished without its bobble for ages so I just kind of thought oh do you know what I'm never going to do this bobble am I so I just I'm wearing it and it's a pattern from Knitting from the North which I will link in the description below. So I'm out with my little dog and behind me is Fishguard Bay but as I say I'll turn you around and have a little look where we are. It's a glorious winter's morning the sun is out no frost we very rarely get frost here that's Fishguard Bay and if you've been to Ireland on the ferry from Fishguard to Ross Lair that is where you get the ferry and if I just pan around a little bit more I live that side of the bay you can't see my house from here but there you go that's that's my little village. Then if I pan back round, Fishguard is up on the hill there. You can just about see the school through the trees. So we're just walking on the local footpaths. Met quite a lot of dog walkers this morning, which has been quite exciting for a small dog. But I shall carry on and uh, tell you a little bit more about sock spinning. I think it's always really important to say that there are no fibre arts police. So actually you spin socks or spin for socks any way you like. And for the last mm, nearly 20 years, <laughs> I've been spinning for socks and I've been spinning two ply, which works for me. I don't particularly like spinning the really, really fine plies that you need for a three ply, which is the more traditional yarn for socks. Having said that, there's nothing like challenging yourself so I have decided we'll try that again so I like to challenge myself and so I am spinning a three ply yarn so I, there are squirrels and birds and the dog is just having a lovely time so she is going to be quite noisy but I will try and edit her out as much as I can so three plies and uh, yeah I'm I'm happy to challenge myself so we'll we'll see how that goes now fibre for socks. If you look at a commercial sock yarn they are quite often a combination of merino and nylon. Uh, the reason for that is the nylon helps to make the merino a bit stronger and also I think quite often merino is used just because it is very luxurious firstly and also economies of scale there is a lot of merino fibre in the world because it is the most widely produced fibre on the planet you know it's kind of wool is synonymous with merino these days and of course as hand spinners we don't have to make those choices we can we can choose merino if we want to uh, i would say if you're going to choose merino then combine it with something else so it's a little bit more hard wearing you can now get bio nylon if you want something that's biodegradable or silk silk's a really strong fiber or alpaca that is the other option and I'm pretty sure that I was watching, uh, is it Carrie from My Woolen Mitten? I'm pretty sure it's Carrie. Gosh, my memory. Anyway, she was talking about using alpaca and yeah, alpaca is great for that. But you probably want a combination of 80% wool, 20% of your other fibre. I'm going for 100% wool. And traditionally, the down type fleeces were used for hosiery. And when I say a down type sheep, I'm talking Shetland, um, South Downs, Dorset Poles. So they have a medium staple length, plenty of crimp, and it's not lustrous. It's not a lustrous yarn at all or a 
teeth back in, not a lustrous fibre. It's quite chalky to look at. So I have got quite a few things in my stash and I really want to use some of my naturally dyed fibres. So when we get back to the house, I'm going to go to the stash and see what we can find. So I've been into the fibre stash and this is a selection of my natural dyed fibres and I really want to use this the colour that I dyed ooh, only a few days ago and this is the older cones and there is a video on the channel and I'll link it um, at the end of the video so you can find it. There you go, so that sort of golden toffee brown, really beautiful colour. And I've been putting it next to the different colours I've got. And I think what I want to do is have two plies of natural dyed colour and then one ply of white, because I think that will work quite well. But as with everything, it's an experiment. And sometimes the experiments work and sometimes they don't. But that is one of the joys. I quite like that. Yeah, I think that could be that could be a good option. What's ah this is Budlia and Copper. So the mordant was copper and it was Budlia and that was just picked down the road. So yeah, I think that could work. Okay, I think we have a winner. So I'm going to get the wheel out and start spinning. Sock yarn needs to be really bouncy and stretchy. So I am putting a lot of twist in this. And I'm also spinning a worsted style of spin so just kind of short forward draw or short forward draft depending on which phrase you prefer and I'm just going to do a ply back test here and you will see there is a lot of twist in this and actually that's probably just a bit too much so really the best thing I can do here is turn the tension up a little bit so that the yarn is being pulled in a little more quickly. I spin on an Ashford traditional which is from about 1986-1987 something like that and it was second hand to me in 2007 but she's done sterling service for me and I really do find I can spin most yarns fairly successfully. This era of Asher Traditional has two whirls and I'm spinning on the smaller of the whirls. So if you want a skinny yarn, go for your skinny whirl. It's a good rule of thumb. At this point, I was really thinking it would be good if I had another whirl just to step down and make the spinning a little easier. And I'm not sure I'm going to get a sock yarn when I've got my three plies plied together because I just wasn't really getting it quite as thin as I think I need to. By the magic of editing, we have three plies ready to be plied. But before I do that, I just wanted to give you a resource and it's a book. And this is a really excellent book for the hand spinner. It is called In Sheep's Clothing and was published back in the mid nineties, I think, but you can still get it online and I will put a link in the description below. And it gives a really great description and the kind of pictures of the properties of, I mean, literally, hundreds and hundreds of different breeds of sheep. And if you're somebody that maybe wants to get into producing fibre as a farmer for hand spinners, then it's a, a volume that I would highly recommend. 
and actually I think anybody that spins wool it's probably something that you'd want in your library. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was this book and at the end of my three ply or chain ply fail video I said that I was really excited because the library had a book I'd ordered and it was in fact this one the Outlander knitting book and I am going to come back to this I did say I was going to do my next video about this book but actually as it happened kind of I got swept up in the spin along and so that will have to wait for another video so until sometime later I will keep that project in the back of my mind and I'll come back to it now without further ado back to the wheel and let's get this lock plied up You can get little doodads with three holes in to just feed your three plies in. But as I lose all little doodads, then I'm just using my fingers to keep them separated. And I'm working pretty close to the orifice and just feeding it in. This was spun clockwise, so I am plying anti-clockwise. And so far, so good. I will be very interested to see what the eventual wraps per inch are when I have set the twist and let it dry. But at the moment, it's all going swimmingly, which generally is the time when it all goes horribly wrong, but I don't feel like it's going to go horribly wrong. I think we're just going to carry on plying until the bobbin is full. So it's on the niddy noddy and time for the big reveal. Oh my goodness, look at all that twist. But actually, I think once I've washed it and given it a couple of snaps, it will be fine. And there you go. It's washed and give it a couple of quick tugs and it's just fine. And I'm going to dry it in the sunshine and knit a bit up. And once it's knitted up, I'll show it to you. And I've just weighted it down with a little hook to try and make sure that that twist drops out a bit. Ta da And there it is. Little yarn cake. And all that hideous amount of twist really has um, dropped out nicely. I mean, there, there is still a bit of energy in it, which is what I want, because I want it to be nice and stretchy. And it certainly is. It's turned out at 12 wraps per inch, which is about DK weight. I mean, as I always say, wraps per inch is only really a guide. You've got to knit up the tension square, or as my American friends tell me, it is called in America a gauge swatch. So done that, and as you can see, plenty of stretch. It was nice to knit up. I liked it. I'm not sure the colour has worked really. Those two colours have combined to create a sort of mustardy colour which is fine I mean I don't hate it you can if you are up close see the two different colours but really I think you know who's going to be looking at my socks in that much detail maybe the dog but I'm pretty sure she doesn't care what my socks look like so yeah there you go will I be spinning three ply in the future I think not um that was a bit of a challenge. I think once I get my new flyer, then I will do it again. But I'm having to save up for that because I, um, um, I have limited funds for my crafting. And basically it means I can't buy anything else or any other craft supplies while I'm saving up for the flyer, which, you know, is fine. I mean, I'll, I'll do that. But um, 
my next sock spin probably will be back to two ply. So if you want to see the other sock yarns I've spun that are on the channel, I will link it on screen right about now. And I'm just going to compare this to the other things that I, or the other sock yarns that I have spun recently. This was a Hlin fiber, I believe, from the Hlin Peninsula sheep. And that was my favorite to make. And it's really nice and bouncy. Like that one. This, I have knitted into socks, but actually wasn't spun specifically for socks. And all there's a bit of bounce in it and stretch, it's not quite the same. And I actually have been wearing these socks recently. They're okay. Um, because it wasn't spun specifically for socks, I think you can tell. And then this was pretty good as well. This is spun from a, um, what is it? Come on, engage brain. What is it? Yes, Shetland and Bio Nylon, which came from World of Wool. And that was spun specifically for socks. And it's got that nice amount of stretch and bounce in it. So there you go. Really enjoying the spin along. And I will link the details on the spin along in the description below. So until next time, spin sister, keep creating. <laughs>